Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, September 19th, 2017 edition of the Sandnet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yet again, we do have a case where security software was used to compromise users. This time, Avast and its popular CCleaner product are to blame version 5.33 and the cloud version 1.07.3191 were replaced with a malicious version that included the Natia Worm according to Cisco's Talus research team. The news broke early on Monday and it is a bit difficult to estimate the total number of systems affected by this, but CCleaner is extremely popular and has been downloaded a total of 2 billion times. They're saying they're seeing about 5 million downloads per week. Now, CCleaner isn't an anti-malware product, but instead, as the name implies, it does assist the user in routine cleanup tasks and the removal of some unwanted software. But it's really more about bloatware and such, not so much about malware. The affected version 5.33 was released on August 15th and replaced with an update 534, which was the non-infected update on September 12th. It's not really clear when exactly the malicious version was placed on the server. The malicious version was signed with a valid Symantec issued certificate. The certificate was issued to Periform, a company that was recently acquired by Avast. Periform originally developed CCleaner, so this was a reasonable certificate to expect for a signature for CCleaner. Currently, at least two different malicious samples were discussed Covered, which were created within minutes of each other. As Telescope points out, uh, this issue may indicate a larger compromise of Avast or at least of Periform, this company that uh, wrote CCleaner and the attacker probably had access to the entire source code to private uh, code signing keys and the like. And of course, the binary was also placed on Avast's regular download server. Cisco published uh, more details about the malware, including domains it will try to resolve and connect to. Now, Avast is uh, disputing a little bit how much damage the malware actually did if this second stage uh, was ever actually enabled. The malware uses a domain name generation algorithm that will change the destination domain once a month. So that's slow enough where it isn't too difficult to set up a blacklist. Antivirus signatures have been released to flag the affected uh, versions. It is possible that you had the vulnerable version installed, but then replaced it as the new version 534 came out. Now, uninstalling CCleaner will not remove the malware. So if you're using CCleaner, be careful, read the write-up by Cisco and make sure you don't have any remnants of the malware sitting around. Kaspersky's SecureList blog has an interesting article about a recent targeted attack that uses an undocumented or badly documented, depending on how you interpret it, word feature in Windows to receive detailed data about the user's Microsoft Office install. The issue here is not an exploit per se. Instead, the attacker is using the feature to learn more about the user's version of Microsoft Office to then, of course, follow up with a target attack for the particular version used. Now, it isn't really new that if Word sends an HTTP request, it uses a very verbose user agent string with a lot of details about the current version of Office. The trick here is about how Word is tricked into sending the HTTP request. The feature used here is called include picture and it's supposed to be used to retrieve pictures that are embedded into the document. So kind of like these HTML uh, pictures uh, that are of course often used to track users, but we, here we are not dealing with HTML. So uh, this is a Word feature that is uh, being used here. 
And the embedded URL is actually somewhat obfuscated. After this include picture call, there is a visible URL that's UTF-16 encoded. Now, UTF-16 encoding, that's what uh, Windows usually does. But in this particular case, UTF-16 encoded strings are ignored. And instead, there's additional data following the UTF-16 encoded URL uh, that is then the data actually being used. Now, that data describes a form, which then leads to the malicious URL that is being retrieved. And of course, with this particular retrieval, the client will then send the user agent. The Word document the link was embedded in looked very benign. According to Kaspersky, what they saw was essentially sort of a generic Word document that described some Google search tricks. So nothing really suspicious. Uh, of course, there wouldn't really be any visual indication to the user uh, that anything bad happened. And again, this isn't really an exploit that executes code or such. It's really something that's used to leak that user agent string so an attacker can then follow up with a more targeted exploit that's more likely going to work. And a new standard is attempting to solve the problem of providing good security contact information for websites. Now, we always had RFC 2142. It provides standard email addresses, like, for example, security at that can be used to report security vulnerabilities. This new standard, however, tries to be more flexible and also tries to offer additional information. In particular, for example, information about bug bounty programs and the like that should make it easier for researchers to report vulnerabilities to the owner of the website. The idea is a simple text file similar to robots.txt, but instead of putting it in the root directory, you put it in the dot well known folder, which has been more recently used for files like this. And the name for the file is just security.txt. So interesting approach. We'll see if it takes off. Of course, the problem will be that probably a lot of websites that don't have a good contact information information won't bother with this standard and websites that already have well-known established bug bounty programs of course will use it to make it easier for users to find these bug bounty programs well and that's it for today so thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow and as a reminder i'll be teaching security 503 intrusion detection in Berlin at the end of October. So if you're in Europe, if you're interested in this class, uh, take a look at it. As usual classes I'll be teaching are at the bottom end of the podcast show notes page. Thanks and talk again tomorrow. Bye.